What's going on everyone? My name is Dominic Delgado. Welcome back to the channel and to another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the stock market pullback as a whole, the new encountering of the Powell talking in the Senate, along with Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus relief package. On top of that, I wanted to take a look over the overall Dow Jones in the past 20 years. On top of that as well, the VIX indicator, which will show us the uh, fluctuation in the market as a whole for the past year or so. Starting off, I want to look at the EV market. Tesla has been getting beaten down like crazy for the past week or two. Uh, on top of that, if we look over at CCIV, with the merger confirmed, we did see people taking their profits from the $50 range all the way to the $35 range now. As well, looking over at NEO, my price target still stands at 70 a great time to buy would be around the $45 range. That would be a steal, but we could see in the next couple of days a future uh, pullback up to the top, depending on how much more pullback we can see in the market. This is just a breathing room, which is great for the overall market because you can't consistently continue to trend upward without some type of pullback. Now looking over at the cannabis sector, we do see um, a pullback as well following the EV market. We did see not as big of a drop this was up to the $63 range not too long ago, maybe a week ago, and people did take the profits. And $24 range is also a great time. We could see a potential pullback down to this $18 range here. Draw a quick line for the support level. That would be right around there. Looking at canopy growth is also part of the cannabis sector. Uh, another support level we can potentially see here if we do continue to drop for the next couple of days. A rough estimate would be around $27. Uh, we didn't see any potential um, breathing room or support levels here. We just had a continuous growth all the way up to the $52 range. Now looking at some stocks that are doing well compared to the rest of the market that is red, anything to do with the recovery of COVID has been bouncing back. Looking at American Airlines and any other uh, airline companies have been doing good for the past couple of days, whereas the rest of the market has been selling off. This is great news. This goes to show that even though the pullback in the tech sector, which is overbought you know, tremendously, uh, we do see some recovery in the actual opening up of the country and just the whole world as a whole with COVID. Looking over at the cruise lines with Carnival, we have seen a upward trend as well for the past couple of months. And this goes to show too when other airlines and crews do start to potentially open up again, we can see more hotels open up as well and this will be a great time for the market to start to flourish again so what does this mean right now for the red market why is it pulling back so much what can we see in the future and what can we do with our portfolios now to potentially set ourselves up for the future before we look at the dow jones and the vix indicator i want to come over here and look at the updates we had today powell pledges to maintain an economic support level uh, we did see the Federal Reserve says that it's far from complete. Although we are returning to a much better economy past year, we do still see some things that are holding us back. The hardest hit sector right now is in the technology sector, but there are high hopes with the economy regaining some steam going again. Uh, we did see back in March when COVID hit that the percent of the unemployment rate spiked up to the 37% range. Right now, we are over the 10% range, so that's not looking too bad. We pulled back 20% unemployment, meaning more people are going to work, more people are being able to go out and buy more things. With the COVID vaccine coming out, it is more acceptable for people to go out and continue doing their day-to-day -day lives. So he further talked about down in the article that he wants to see increase in the interest in the market. We have seen that the market for houses is nearly almost 0% for the fixed return rate. So just looking at some potential good news that we have seen on the overall outlook in 2021. Unemployment has come down sharply after surging last year, but it still remains nearly doubled in February 2020. Level of probable understands that the extent of weakness in the labor market, likewise consumer spending, has bounced back, but the service sector remains subdued. And again, this goes to show that with the vaccine rolling out, this allows people to go out more often and spend the money that they've been fearing of spending due to losses of jobs and having to pay their rents and whatever else they can have for expenses. So some big news as well that is going to be coming up in this Friday to Saturday. They have their house bill that will be passed. 
uh, coming up in this week, going on Friday to Saturday, we will see the $1.9 trillion stimulus package from Biden pass to the House. And in regards to this, we can also potentially see an increase of the minimum wage from $7.75 go up to $15. And this could potentially be a good and bad player for the future. Uh, good news for this is that more people will be making more money, leading to more economic growth. But also in the long run, going from $7 to $15, this will increase inflation uh, nationwide, making everything more expensive. We do tend to see in California and New York and any other big populated states that is more expensive to live in due to the popularity and how much people want to live there. Uh, compared to other states in the Midwest or just in the central part of uh, U.S. where homes tend to be cheaper and less expensive to maintain, but also the jobs don't pay as much. So it still is in talks, but we can see on Friday or Saturday, the House will come to the final decision what they want to do if they are 100% backed with Joe Biden's uh, $1.9 trillion stimulus package or if they want to go ahead and take some changes out and readjust a few things before their final decision. But we have seen Biden has made this very clear that this is a bipartisan decision, meaning that the Democrats and the Republicans have come together to make sure this is in best hopes for the people and the economy as a whole. The only thing that there are some downsides to this bill, people are criticizing that it could be a too big of a relief package. $1.9 trillion is a lot of money to pump out, especially when we have been seeing inflation for the past year. The Treasury has been printing money nonstop to make sure they can do their best to help people in need with the COVID. But all in all, this should see an increase of helping the economy go back to normal or at least maintain itself for a while. Now, we have seen in the past also in the past 20 years and even further, just wanted to keep it pretty short here, that we did see in the 2000s when the dot-com bubble did pop and we dropped a bit. This is the recessions. These gray marks here are the recessions we have seen. Uh, further in 2007 to 2010, we did see the house market crash uh, with inflation rates going way too high and houses being way overvalued. When we did crash here, houses did significantly drop meaning that you can buy a $500,000 home for half or even less than half of what the actual price was at the time. Uh, we did slowly recover, as you've seen in the years. Everything does recover over time, and that is why it's best to do a long-term investment, buy now, and sell in the future when you're ready. People's strategies do tend to change, but for the overall growth of the full market, you can see over the years it has consistently gone up and the most current one we have seen was the COVID back here in 2019. The pullback all the way down in March was the cap. Uh, and this is a scene also that, you know, with the pullback, people are tending to put more money in. And with more news coming out on a weekly basis with everything that's going on, we do see a continued uptrend in the market with potential pullbacks here and there. Now, some things to look at that goes hand in hand with this Dow Jones and the overall market as a whole. You go over to the VIX, which is the volatility index of the market. So when we see the market tend to drop, the VIX goes up, meaning that people are more scared and it's volatile. So just to go ahead and show again one more time that with the market dropping down here at the Jones, we were at 21,000 on the Dow Jones. And as of right now, we are sitting around the 31,000 range. The VIX shows when the market was in a scare that we jumped up to 82% volatility due to the sell-off of the market. And over the time when we were recovering from COVID, it has slowly dropped down. People are not as worried. And occasionally we'll have some news that pushes up the VIX again, such as the increase of unemployment, maybe some Moderna and Pfizer news being pushed back right here. On top of that, this is when we were talking about politics for a long time in the news. People being scared of what was going to happen with Trump and who was going to win the election. Overall, again, you can see the volatility spike up here again when the actual election was in play. And we saw Biden was elected as president. And this overall was a shock because we wanted to see what he was going to do for the future of the market and what he can potentially be doing for the recovery of the country. And finally, back to where we are now, we are sitting around the 20% volatility, which is not too high. This is pretty average. And as you could see, if we were in some type of crazy recession or pullback or crash, we would see a huge spike up like we have seen in the past here up to the 80% range. 
but there are no fundamental changes in the market right now. This is a breathing time for the market and this is a great time as well to add into your positions. Cost averaging is one of the best things you can do because a lot of the times it is hard to time the market and people tend to buy on the highs and sell on the lows due to fear. So coming back over to the charts, I wanted to look at Tesla. We did see Tesla on the year map that they started at $72 down at the very bottom when COVID hit and ran all the way up to the high 800s and has been getting slammed down for the past couple of weeks. Now we do know in all these companies here, there are no fundamental changes. They are still all the same companies they have been for the past year. Uh, anything, there has been more good news coming out than bad news, which means you're buying the same company you could have bought down here in the crash for the same price now, but at a cheaper discount. We could see in the following months, this go way above the 850 range and potentially higher in the years to come. And that goes along with all of these stocks. Now looking at some potential downside, if we do continue to drop for the next couple of weeks or months, some real support we could look for for Tesla, which is pretty hard to call because there are no real support levels here around the 500 to 700 range. So the first potential pullback we could see and support levels would be here around the $500 range or so. The next support from there we could see around the 450 to 460 range where we tested the all time highs. And when we, like we've said before in many videos, when you do tend to test these levels multiple times, and we break through, that tends to become the future support levels. But the best thing to do now in red days like this, especially if you are not widely versatile, is to just clearly walk away and just wait it out. If you are a long-term investor, this is just noise in the market. It will go back up, give it time, no need to sell off the fear. And I wanna go ahead and ask you guys down in the comment section, what do you guys think will happen in the next coming weeks? Do you see potential of these stocks still going down? And on top of that, what positions are you going to be adding to or picking up in the future? Me personally, I have been continuing to add a bunch of shares on Palantir, Bingo, and NDM, and many others because I do know fundamentally these are great companies for the future. So I'll continue to add to these and hold for the long term. That's all I've got for you guys in today's video. If you did enjoy, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.